Peace family, Hotep family. It is good to see you. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Just let me know in the chat. I'm so happy to see everyone here today. I have a special, special presentation today. I'm very excited. Um, I'm, you know, I'm excited about all the conversations here at My Speaks, but I'm extremely excited about today's conversation. Um, as you probably know. Um, but if you're new to this channel here at Ma'at Speaks, we are aimed to demonstrate how to maintain, uphold, and build a code and culture through the principles of Ma'at. And if you need to uh, refresher on those principles, those are balance, harmony, truth, order, justice, reciprocity, and righteousness. So we begin by applying these principles to ourselves. Then we extend those principles to our families and ultimately our communities. So before we begin our conversation, I want you to just make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe if you have not subscribed yet, and you can help this channel grow by sh just sharing the conversation, just hitting the like button, um, and you know, anything else that you see on the channel, you can also share, like, and do all of that good stuff. So remember, you can support the channel in a few ways. I will go ahead, put the little banner here um, that I have here at the, let's see, da -da -da -da. and you can, you know, support the channel. As you know, I have a cash app. I have my Ma'at Speaks uh Cash app, my Venmo is cash, uh, my Odd Speaks, and then also my PayPal, which is Gen Health Revolution. You can buy me a cup of tea at buymeacoffee.com slash my Odd Speaks. And then you can follow me on Instagram at Generational Health Revolution. Also, my website is generationalhealthrevolution.com. So I will put that there. And of course, now I do have a special guest. We have a special presentation here, which is my elder talk. So we are revamping elder talk back. And um, so we're going to be diving right into that as soon as I just shout out some people who are already here. So I wanna shout out Marty, who's the first person in the chat. Hotep to you. Thank you for coming to the conversation. I really do appreciate you. And to my love, the Tahuti to my, my aunt, peace, my love. Thank you for always holding the chat down and doing what you do for my aunt speaks. And to my brother, Ayapo, peace to you, Hotep Ayapo. It's always good to see you. And peace to your lovely, lovely wife. And Crypto Vaults, peace to you. Thank you for coming through. Always good to see you in the chat. So, uh, TW Popcorn, what's popping? <laughs> peace to you, brother. Thank you for coming through. So, anyone else who sees this live or you come on in, I may not stop. We may stop at the end if we have time for some questions, but we're going to get right into the conversation as soon as I invite my guests. So remember, before we get deep into this conversation, I want to remind you that as you enter, prepare to open your minds. We have been given a filter that most of us are accustomed to seeing through. So often we jump to defend only what we know and forget that there is so much that we do not know. So here at My Odd Speaks, we want to adduce a different perspective or filter so we can consciously heal ourselves and name ourselves in a way that is native to who we are. So I started this channel so we could heal ourselves, our community, and build with one another so that we can create a world that our children and future generations do not need to heal from. So let us begin. So I am not going to keep my guests waiting much longer. I want to welcome someone who is near and dear to my heart, master teacher, elder, author, star of documentaries, Hidden Colors, Out of Darkness, Heavy is the Crown, and the list goes on of what he has done for our community. He is an amazing educator and has been committed to liberating the minds of our people for over 40 years. So without further ado, my special guest, Elder Baba Kabahiawatha Kamene Hotel. 
Hotep to you, my sister Ma'at, and thank you uh, for inviting me to Ma'at Speaks, and congratulations to you and to um, your family and to everything that makes you who you are. Thank you for this opportunity, and to all those who have joined us, I thank you also for this opportunity to be able to share. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you, um, you know, coming to the platform. I just, I have to say before we get jump right into the conversation, that um, it's it's an honor to have you here. I, you know, like I said before, uh, you are a really big part of our journey, of my journey, my husband's journey, even our children. And it's funny how you never meet someone, <laughs> but they have an impact on your life. So, you know, as just, I, I just thank you for that. Uh, when I told our kids that you were coming on, they were excited. So you're royalty in our family, <laughs> but I just want to um, thank you for agreeing. And it's an honor to have you here. Well, you know, my sister, my, uh, the fact that your family uh, is doing this work and that your children uh, would be aware of the work that we're doing and would be excited tells me everything that we need to know about our future. And so, and, and this is the message that I always try to give us as a people is that uh, we, you know, we're going through things. We've been going through things for 400 plus years. Right. But we are going to make it to the promised land. We, we, we are going to make it to that point. You see, to me, religions is for people who want to get to heaven. Mm. Spirituality is for people who want to bring heaven down to earth. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is what we really need to come to, because if we can get to that point, for instance, just Ma'at. Now, Ma'at has those principles. Uh, balance, harmony, truth, justice, order and arrangement. Mm -hmm. But my, my, to me, a, a fundamental principle and characteristic of my art is reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Because I know as human beings, if we really believed in reciprocity, we would be very careful the things that we speak, think, mm -hmm. and do. What mm -hmm. goes around comes around. That's what reciprocity says. And from an African perspective, not only does what go around come around, it, come, it comes around and goes around sevenfold. Mm. So if you perform good deeds, your good deeds will come back to you sevenfold. Mm. If you don't do good deeds, they'll come back to you sevenfold. And I think that any human being that realized and believed in that principle of reciprocity, they'd be very careful how they conducted themselves. Mm -hmm. And, and that's why I always focus in on reciprocity as one of the principles of Ma'at, because Tehuti, her husband, is the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. She is the path that you walk on. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have knowledge, you can't be on the path. And if you're not on the path, you can't have knowledge. So you can see how that balance mm -hmm. of, of being truthful and being on the path of justice Mm -hmm. And the knowledge of that truth and justice would be husband and wife. It would be a perfect complement to each other. Mm -hmm. And so I just appreciate all that you're doing for our community and sharing what it is that you're doing. And just for our children to understand it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. There's still some things we got to do. Dr. King was right. right you, know? <laughs> you know, he said, we got some difficult days ahead. He said that back in 1968. <laughs> mm, yeah. Freshman in high school when he said that. Mm. And I realized that we do have a lot that we have to do, but our ancestors didn't bring us this far to leave us like this. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, and so we're going to start with uh, discussing, um, and that's a great basis to start from because you know, last month I did a I did a series on spirituality, and one of the last conversations that we had was about build building with others. You know, even though we have different, we walk different paths. So you know, sometimes that's one of the biggest hurdles that we have in our community. Is you know, that's kind of the we say you said spirituality before religions, but it's like spirituality versus religions a lot in our community. So I want to touch on that first on, 
you know, why does spirituality and religion divide our community so much? Why is it so hard for us to work together? You know, you know, why can't we put that kind of to the side and um, work together with one another? In, in my interpretation, in what I've experienced, what I've seen my system on, is that we have lost our African way. And if we lose an African way, then much of the building together mm -hmm. can't happen. Religions are the children of spirituality. When I wrote my book, Spirituality Before Religions, I purposely subtitled it, Spirituality is Unseen Science, and Science is Seen Spirituality. Mm -hmm. I've had the opportunity to speak in many churches. And when I, and, and I'm speaking about black churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I've spoken to get people's attention, one of the first things I say when I get up to the pulpit is, I don't believe in God. <laughs> and that, that starts to rumble in the congregation. Right. <laughs> and then I say, not only that, but I want you to know that I don't have faith in God. Mm. That's when folks start to get ready to get up and get out of the church. Mm -hmm. But I say, before you leave, I want you to understand that as an African, you can lose your faith and you can stop believing. Mm -hmm. But I know God. And once you know God, then you cannot unknow God. Mm -hmm. so the point I'm making is that each and every one of us is the creator having a human experience mm -hmm. and that he in her brilliance because mm -hmm. you can't have a god and not have a goddess right my you know my brain can't you know my brain trips over the fact that we could think that god is a man only mm -hmm. that just doesn't work with the way in which i even function as a human being mm -hmm. because again balance tells me that there is that there is the balance of all things. That is one of the laws of the Kibalion. Mm -hmm. And so the point that I'm trying to make more than anything else is that to an African, one of the things that got us to build pyramids also put us on the plantation. And that is that we saw the universality of love, respect, honor, and integrity in all people. We just didn't know who was coming amongst us about 500 years ago. Mm-hmm. And so therefore our interpretation of them, we, interpret a, we interpreted them as we interpret ourselves. They do not have the same intentions. Mm. And so out of a universal spirituality given to us by nature, the Indo-European and not being able to understand the universality of spirituality, they created religions, which might be called what I might call little gangs mm. and right now we are in the middle of a gang warfare where the religions that they have created out of our spirituality are at war with each other mm. if you look at the major religions around the world mm -hmm. everybody's fighting about religions right no 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 matter how you look at what is going on whether you're looking at Kyrie Irving or you're looking at, at Kanye or whether you're looking at this new thing that they're calling the Christian nationals or mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're looking at even some of the things going on in Iran as it relates to the relationship of women. Right. And that is Islam. Okay. That's not the African Islam. Mm -hmm. Islam came out of the mountains of Ethiopia mm -hmm. and was brought into Saudi Arabia, which was an African landmass. Mm-hmm. And the, the purity of the spiritual system of what is known as the way of peace or the path of peace is not known. And the fact that they would even have any type of negative aspect towards women, it goes against the very nature that Allah, before they called the, their creator Allah, her name was Allat. Mm. A-L-L-A-T. And again, family, don't believe a word I say. You can get a book that's titled um, uh, Egyptian Sacred Science and Al-Islam by mm -hmm. Rafiq Bailal. 
and Thomas Goodwin, who has done the research of this place called, listen to it, Ma'at Ka, mm -hmm. which we today call Mecca. Mm -hmm. The original name was Ma'at Ka, Ka meaning spirit, and Ma'at is the way of peace. Mm -hmm. And so Ma'at Ka was the spirit of the path of peace. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at these concepts, we adapted those religions mm -hmm. because of our enslavement. Because we can say what we want to about what Europe did to Africa, but don't forget what the Indo-Europeans under the guise of Islam did to Africa first. Mm. Because it was those Indo-Europeans that invaded Africa, East Africa in particular, right. that began to soften or weaken the abilities for Africans to fight the Europeans when they came years later. Mm -hmm. And so as an African, I'm not feeling none of them, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. but I have an ultimate and profound respect for their scripture. Mm -hmm. okay. And so when I wrote my book, Spirituality Before Religions, my sister, it was never meant to uh, insult. And nowhere in my book do I, do I mention another religion because mm -hmm. that's my purpose of writing the book. Right. My purpose was simply be you Christian, Muslim, Jew, Rosicrucian, um, Buddhist, Zoroastri, whatever you are, mm -hmm. I want you to be able to see where your scripture came from. It came from the walls, the stone carvings of Africa. Right. And out of that, when you got it, you took it and then you, you arrested it. Mm. so that it could not grow. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is meant to grow. It's meant to be able to become, it's, it's an organic entity. I noticed that some of your guests that have been on uh, have, have been people into the natural way of living and natural way of eating, mm -hmm. herbalists and, and folk that are, that is an organic way of life. You are forever graduating into a higher form of thinking mm. and living when you are, when you are the type of human you were meant to be born. But their religions stunt them. They, they put you in a bowl. They put you in what they say is a box. Yeah. And I know that we say sometimes I want to uh, uh, think out of the box or I want to take you out of the box. Mm -hmm. Words, I, I understand what they're saying. But I say it a different way. Because... The box is an illusion. Mm. So if I think I'm going to think out of the box, mm. that means that there's too many of my thoughts that are still in the box. Yeah. If I'm trying to take somebody out of the box, then that means that I'm leaving people in the box. But if I'm saying the box doesn't exist, it's an illusion. <laughs> yeah. Then, then we got something going on called the Wizard of Oz here. <laughs> You know, where you are born with everything that you need. There's nothing that you need that you were not born with. Just mm -hmm. like a woman is born with every egg she will ever produce. Right. No new egg comes into a, 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 into a woman's body. All they do is go through the process of becoming. Some are dispelled from the body monthly. Some are fertilized that bring forward children. And mm -hmm. others are in the waiting room waiting to be fertilized mm -hmm. or to go through the process of the monthly cycle. Right. The same way that is true, the same way is true that we are born with everything that we will ever need. Other people will help us. Mm -hmm. The work that you're doing, when folk come in and they listen to your program, they say, wow, okay, that's, that's a great idea. But everything that we're going to say right now, no matter what it may be, Every listener, everybody that came on board already knew it before mm -hmm. they came. Mm. You know, it's like being in a dark room, can't see a thing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you find a light switch and you turn it on and you see the, the chairs, the table, the cup of coffee. <laughs> mm -hmm. My question is, did all those things appear in the room when you turn the light on? Right. No, they were always there. Your light just wasn't on. So the purpose of life is to find the light switch. And the way in which we do that is through spirituality. Mm. So that that brings me to the whole concept between we have we have truth, we have reality, and then we have facts. 
And so when I was reading um, 14 Keys by Chief Yu, and he talked about how truth is the center of all in existence, but it, it can't be confused with a fact as a fact is just an agreed upon concept. And so reality is, is really just the larger acceptance of that, that illusion, kind of like the box that you were talking about. And so it may not actually even point to the truth. So when we even use reality, we're kind of using it in a way that's not even like not even really true. So, um, you know, it, it makes me think of I have put the scripture here like and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But when you um, and then uh, India Ari, she has a, 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 a lyric in her song where she says, um, now, you know, the truth by the way it feels. So, you know, growing up in church and coming from Christianity, you know, you would hear that like there's freedom in freedom in Christ or freedom, um, freedom and, you know, giving yourself to the Lord or to the church and things like that. But I want to kind of under I think we need to have a better understanding exactly of what truth is. How are we to actually recognize truth? My my concept system, Ma'at, and I'm going to look at it a little bit differently. Okay. Um, truth and facts can change. Okay. I'll give you an example. Yesterday in New York, the sun was bright. Mm -hmm. And it was a cool day, but it was a nice day. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Okay. And that's a fact. Mm, okay. Today, it rained all day. Mm -hmm. Now that's the truth. And that's the fact. Okay. But the truth that was yesterday, the fact that was yesterday is not the truth and fact today. Mm -hmm. What we should go for, and this is why science becomes so important. Mm -hmm. Evidence. Okay. Evidence is what you're after. Mm, because yes. somebody can tell you a truth that's their truth, but not your truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, somebody would say to you, for instance, they blocked me on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. And they said that I was not following the communities. Mm -hmm, right. Whose community are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> right. Because I had posted something up about um, the, the red, black, and blue. Okay. <laughs> that I'm, I'm extending that, you know, I had done a documentary, a mini doc on, on uh, Chocolate City, on Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And there is, in Washington, D.C., in the park dedicated to Marvin Gaye, there's a statue of him. Mm -hmm. And it says, at the bottom where his feet are, it says, war is not the answer. Mm -hmm. Only love can conquer hate. And I began to talk about the Bloods and the Crips and the other street organizations. And I was explaining that in our community, you, you know, uh, uh, um, war is not the answer. Only love can conquer hate. And I look forward to the joining of the red and the blue to the black. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, 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 it's the red, black, and blue, you know? And hey, they blocked me because I put that up on my Instagram page. Okay? But I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'd be surprised if they didn't do it. In fact, I feel kind of good that they did it because it means I'm doing something for the community. But to go back to the point that we're making, whose mm -hmm. community are you talking about? Right. Because in our community, that was celebrated by so many people that made comments. Mm -hmm. Now, to their community, it may not be because unity amongst us is not what they want. And so truth and facts. Mm hmm can be an illusion. Okay. However, if a person accepts the illusion as their reality, right, it is a reality. Okay. That's why evidence. Evidence. Yeah. Once I would ask, well, what is the evidence? Then you've got to show me from a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. And by science, I mean knowledge, tehuti. See, mm -hmm. see it means knowledge. Mm hmm. And so I'm asking you through science, through knowledge, evidence, to be able to demonstrate to me why that is a truth mm -hmm. and why that is a fact. 
Okay. I, I can prove to you through evidence yesterday was a very good day. You could see the sun and it was a day that people could go out and have a good time. Today, it rained all day and it was a very cold day because of the rain. Almost mm -hmm. came snow. And that's evidence. The rain mm -hmm. falling is evidence. And that's a fact. Mm -hmm. But the English language uses these words to create the illusions mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in. So I'm, I'm looking for evidence and that's science. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And to that, let me demonstrate how our ancestors created spirituality. Okay. And basically it came through nature mm -hmm. and what our ancestors saw as they began to ag become agriculturalists is that they would put a, a seed in the earth. Mm -hmm. The earth would take it down and then would come forward a plant or a fruit or whatever it was. That fruit, that plant would live. It would have a life. Yeah. It would then age. Mm hmm. It would die, decay, and then it would be reborn. Mm -hmm. And so our ancestors, the Twa people, mm -hmm. the Twa and Buti, the Khoisan of Central South Africa, they were the first agriculturalists. They were the first family on earth. They then began to create an analogy. And they said, that's interesting. You put the seed in the earth, comes forward the plant, the plant grows, comes forward, serves its purpose, lives its life, ages, dies, decays, and then it comes back into existence. Mm. They say, well, that's interesting because man plants seed in woman. Yeah. There's a process of, of embryology where there's, well, they, you know, we're using these words, but the, the child grows in mother. It comes forward to the earth. It grows. It lives. It ages. Mm -hmm. Dies. The body decays and then came for the idea of resurrection. Evidence. Mm -hmm. No, no uh, touched by God thought right. from the outside that came in and divinely made this person think of this. They looked at nature. Nature told them this. Mm -hmm. And then came the story as they evolved and they traveled across Africa. They developed stories of this life system. And in Kemet, in Kush Kemet, it's called the Asarian drama. Which right. Is behind you right now. Mm -hmm. With Asar sitting on the throne. Okay. And I believe that's Ma'ati over your right shoulder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's the story of the path. Living on the path. And, and Asar, that concept of resurrection. Mm -hmm. Person. It was a metaphor. Right. You know, see, these, see, these Indo-Europeans took it very serious. <laughs> And they took the metaphor too literal. Yeah. Okay. Africans were saying, no, 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 no. I mean, we don't mean that an actual person existed. Heru represents the avenging of evil. And he takes on his father's life on earth while his father becomes the judge in the underworld. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, was, it is a beautiful story. Yeah. That folk got contaminated. Mm-hmm by their warped interpretation of life. Mm -hmm. And so as we begin to develop these concepts and we look at nature, everything that you need to know, nature will explain it to you. Right. We are a natural people. Even to this day, we still do that. Mm. Yeah. So I want to um, touch on um, before... Well, I want to touch on the, the science a little bit more here, because I know when I first was introduced um, uh, to this, one of the things that I had um, a hard time with was the concept of concept of the tree dwellers. So it was, you know, coming from Christianity mm. and then, you know, hearing um, you're coming from tree dwellers, you know, and, you know, you're thinking, you're thinking gorillas, monkeys, apes, whatever, you know, that was a really, that was really hard for me to wrap my head around for yeah. a moment. So, uh, I think for those that are, 
you know, either coming out of it or maybe still in it, or even, you know, having this kind of concept of being anti-evolution. Can you briefly kind of go over the progression from the first life to us as, as humans and what, why, and why that's important for us to understand in the connection to our spirituality? Yeah. And, and you see, that's a very important question, my sister. And that is why that's the first chapter in my book mm -hmm. is physical evolution to help us understand, because in the beginning, before the beginning began, uh, yes. there was no concept that had activated itself mm -hmm. as life on our planet. Let's just start with the earth. Instead of going to the cosmos for now, I, I, we, we could tell the same story in the cosmos that I'm about to tell you about the earth, but I just want to stay on the earth for now. Mm -hmm. the, the, the first very nature of life in the water that was, that was initiated by carbon, mm -hmm. 666, six protons, six neutrons, six electrons was bacteria. But nothing on earth in the water. And everything was in the waters. Mm -hmm. Waters of Nun, to be exact. It was bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then bacteria became botany, plants. And then botany became fish. And then fish became amphibians that came up on the land. Mm -hmm. And because they spent time on the land, they used their fins to move, normally back to another water hole, because mm -hmm. they had, their, their, their gills had not adjusted to breathing oxygen in the air. Mm -hmm. And so they used their, their fins to move. And then some of them converted their gills to lungs and could stay on the land. Mm -hmm. So instead of returning back into the water, they stayed on the land and they were the amphibians. Right. And then the amphibians grew to become reptiles. Mm -hmm. And then out of reptiles came mammals. Right. Okay. So when you look at our history, there was a time that, that we came out of a mammal known as hadraconium. Mm -hmm. It was no bigger than the last digit on your pinky. This was one of the original mammals where we came from. Mm -hmm. Okay. And out of hadraconium, other mammals grew. Let me now jump about 25 million years ago to the, what is called the age of the ape or what we call the, the Miocene period. In the Miocene period, the mammals had developed themselves into a conceptual framework that they were now entities that were functioning right okay there was a particular group known as ramapithecus some people call it ramapithecus some people say no that's not the name for them i don't care what you call them what we do know is that there was an entity that was living in the tree and some of those entities came down on the earth for whatever reason mm -hmm. maybe they were kicked out <laughs> by somebody or maybe they saw food on the land or maybe it got too crowded in the tree and this is happening now in what we today call central and south africa this is the only place where this is happening right now. Mm -hmm. the ones that come down onto the earth have to adapt to a new way of living the ones that stay in the tree keep their life going the mm -hmm. ones that stayed in the tree we call pongids p-o-n-g-i-d-s the one that comes down on the earth we call hominids H-O-M-I-N-I-D-S. Mm -hmm. The hominids are going to go through different changes. They're going to grow. They're going to develop different ways of living. They're going, to, and because of those different ways of living, they're going to start to live a lifestyle of thinking that is going to adjust to their conditions. And they're going to continue to live, continue to live, continue to adapt. Their body's going to change. The structure of who they are is going to change. And then ushered in is going to be the Twa Mbuti people. And the Twa Mbuti people, the Khoisan of Southern Africa, in this big area of, of, of Africa that goes from Central Africa, today we call it the Republic of Congo, the, 
the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo that comes down into Southern Africa. That whole area there mm -hmm. is going to be this group of people we call the Twa Mbuti, the Khoisan, or derogatorily, they're called pygmies. Mm -hmm. This is the original family. And we need to pay respect to them. Mm. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. And they went from hunters and gatherers and fisher. This is how they survived. They hunted, they gathered, mm -hmm. and they fished. Mm. And this is what allowed them to live. Right. And then they developed themselves. They grew. They started thinking better. They started doing things better. And the thing is, is that they are who we know as homo sapiens sapiens. However, if I take you back to the very beginning of this group of people, they are the first group. And again, I, I see somebody had mentioned Dr. Sheikh Hunter Diop's book, The African Origins of Civilization. Mm -hmm. You can go to his book, his last book. It was Encyclopedia, Civilization or Barbarism. Mm, yeah. Part where he'll tell you about what's going on with the human family. Mm -hmm. It went from Australopithecus robustus, a robust African. Mm -hmm. Thick, big, still walking over, hunched over, like when you see apes and gorillas. Right. Still hunched over. But they're a different type of person than the Panjid. Same ancestor, Ramapithecus. Mm -hmm. But because they had to come down on the ground, they developed a new type of lifestyle, whereas the ones that remained in the tree kept their arboreal or their tree life. Mm -hmm. From Australopithecus robustus, the ones that could survive. Because you see, family, it's not the strongest that survive. And mm -hmm. it's not the, the survival of the fittest. Okay. The ones that continue are the ones that can adapt to the new ways. Mm, okay. Well, always remember that. Mm -hmm. Just because you're big and strong, don't mean you're gonna survive. Because if you cannot adjust to the new way of the world, you're going to become extinct. Yeah. And so, Australopithecus robustus, the group that could um, adjust to the new way, became Australopithecus gracile, mm -hmm. slender human being, slender, mm -hmm. not as big, graceful, being able to move quicker. The ones that could not survive, the ones that could not adjust to the new way, died off. From Australopithecus gracile, they had done so many dynamic things. They changed the very nature of the way life was. And so they started using tools. You see, because up until then, we were always using our hands. Right. But then all of a sudden now we're saying, but wait a minute now, uh, that stick over there or that rock. You know, in, you know, instead of me trying to break that, that, that nut open, I can take a rock and pound it and the nut will open up mm -hmm. uh, when I'm, when, when I'm putting seeds in the ground, instead of me always putting my finger, I can take that stick and put in the ground. So I don't hurt my finger all the time trying to put seeds in the earth. Mm -hmm. so they started to use their environment because, you know, that's what economy means. Yeah. Echo comes from a Greek word. African word, but I'll call it what they say. Oikos, O-I-K-O-S. Mm -hmm. O-I-K-O-S means environment. And know me is to know. Yeah. Echo know me is to know your environment. Mm -hmm. And the first economics is land. And so out of this land, this knowledge of land, agriculture was what they based everything on because the better you eat, the better you think, the better you think, the better you eat, the better you think, the more civilization you're going to develop. Yeah. And so then out of Australopithecus uh, gracile, the ones that could survive that adjusted to the new way of the world using tools, they moved on to become homo habilis and the ones that could not died out. Mm -hmm. Now, in the sake of time, I'm going to take you through Homo habilis, did the same thing. The ones that survived became Homo erectus. They stood up straight. Mm -hmm. When they stood up straight, they created a relationship between the sun and the pineal gland. Because when you're bent over, the sun is going to hit you here. Right. But when you stand up straight, the sun is going to hit you here. Mm -hmm. And so what happened is that in standing up straight, all of the liquid systems were released and were allowed to have <laughs> free flow. Yeah. Okay. And and in your brain at the base, you, you have an area known as foramen magnum. F-O-R-A-M-E-N. I'm 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 gonna spell family because I'm a teacher. 
and I and I just don't want to throw these words out and mm -hmm. it sound good, but you need to have the spelling for those of you who want to do the research. You know, I advise you take your notebook out because we're gonna do some serious. Right. <laughs> magnum is M A G N U M. Forming magnum is um is in your brain is an opening where your spinal cord goes through at the base of your skull. Mm -hmm. When we stood up straight, when we were bent over, there was a, a cataract that, you know, it, it, it was bent. Here was our head and here was, here, here was our body, our back. But when we stood up straight, mm -hmm. it allowed the free flow of what we call cerebral spinal fluid. Mm -hmm. And out of this, there became, and, and by the way, I have this in my book, Spirituality Before Religion. I'm just doing it quick right now yeah. to answer your question so that we can understand this. Because I'm going to tell you something at the end that's going to answer your question. And so then Homo habilis became Homo erectus. Homo mm -hmm. erectus became thinking human or Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. And then when we started to get creative with our stuff, we became a creative thinker. And that is Homo sapiens sapiens. Mm -hmm. And Homo sapiens sapiens from the Twa people were the ones that became the um, hunters, the gatherers, and they uh, fished. And from there, they became um, specialists in agriculture. They studied astronomy in order to understand agriculture better. And then out of becoming agriculturalists, they began to become technologists. And after Africans got their show together, then they took it on the road. And they became the Kushites and they became the Chemites and they came, became what we today call the Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. Because although we want to get tripped up on in East Africa, don't forget West Africa. Because when the pyramids were being born, uh, uh, built in East Africa, there were nations living in West Africa, in Nigeria in particular, in Ghana, in mm -hmm. Senegal. See, we get caught up in the exoticness of Egypt because that's where the Indo-Europeans are. Right. And we tend to think nothing was going on in West Africa. You go down to South Africa to Namibia, if you think the great Zimbabwe is something else, you should see what's in Namibia. Mm. And this was being built at the same time that the pyramids were being built. Mm -hmm. And we still don't even know when the pyramids were really built. Mm. And so the concept of the movement of the human family, remember we started as bacteria and mm. then we became yeah. botany and then we became fish. And then amphibians, and then reptiles, and then mammals, and then we went through a process of mammalian life to the uh, to the point that we became the Australopithecus robustus, the Australopithecus gracile, the Homo habilis, the Homo erectus, to Homo sapiens, Homo sapiens sapiens, and family. There was a time in Africa before we were rudely interrupted by these Indo-Europeans. We were what was called super sapi uh, super sapiens. Mm -hmm. And if you check out Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> they'll tell you about the Super Saiyans. Yes, my husband is a fan of that. <laughs> yeah, my husband, he, he watches that. <laughs> well, that's what Dragon Ball Z is about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when you deal with the Super Saiyans. See, this is our history. And the challenge that we are attempting to do is to bring this back to help us understand. Mm -hmm. Because whenever I post something on Instagram that deals with Dragon Ball Z, you should see how many people respond. Mm. And yet they say, some say, hey, I knew it all the time. Some people say, well, I never thought about it, but now that you say it, I can see it. Yeah. And what I'm saying is that there was a time or we have actually regressed as a human family. Mm -hmm. And remember what we said about spirituality. It is meant to grow, organically grow. Mm -hmm. It is not meant to devolve. It's meant to grow. Mm -hmm. Because we're living amongst a people who fundamentally contaminate everything they touch. Mm -hmm. We, in accepting what they are saying, mm -hmm. become contaminated too. Mm -hmm. So to go back to your question, that's why we can't get along with each other. Because mm. we're looking at the world through someone else's eyes. Yeah. And if they look at us as an enemy, why are we surprised when we look at each other as enemies? Yeah. Because we're looking at us through their eyes. All this thing they're talking about rap music, okay? All this stuff that they're talking about rap music, whatever they say, 
no matter how much we may have our challenge with it, that's not us. Mm -hmm. That's their perception of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I loved how um, you actually ended the first chapter. And I'm just going to read a little bit of it because I, I just, I, I, I put something in the, uh, in the, I wrote something next to it. But when you said the creator had taken the physical road of my eye and balanced this physical perfection with the knowledge, understanding, wisdom, and intellect of Tahuti. Life's history had reached its ultimate physical evolutionary proportions. Now it was time to take the spiritual road of Ma'at to perfect the spiritual wisdom of Tahuti. It was time for the masterpiece to search inside. It was now the divine time to take the involutionary path. It was time to search and find the creator within, knowing that when the body united with the spirit, the creator would then fulfill his or her original divine thought and desire to know self and would proclaim, I am the creator having a human experience. So I put next to that with the ev with evolution being connected to restoring Ma'at, to bringing balance. Is that what would you say that that is? Um, what, what would you say to that? Let me take you into the cosmos for a mm -hmm. moment. Okay. Okay. Before the beginning began, our ancestors said that before the beginning began, and this, by the way, this thought, Dr. Sheikh Ander Diop talks about it, Dr. Theophali Obenga talks about it. But the idea of daring to think of what existed before existence existed mm -hmm. is a breakthrough in human thought. It's a breakthrough to have that thought. And African philosophers began to ask, well, okay, we know what happened from the moment that it started, like the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we, we can trace what happened. But what existed before the Big Bang? And they called it the waters of Nun, mm -hmm. which we call the universe in science, mm -hmm. which we call hydrogen plasma mm -hmm. in science. Because there's four entities. A lot of people see solid, gas, and liquid. But there's a fourth one. And this is left out because people can't explain it because of the nature. They don't have the depth of intellectual ability, mm -hmm. what Africans did. And they called it, we call it plasma. And plasma is ethereal spiritual water. What the hydrogen, hydrogen is plasma. Mm -hmm. Not the hydrogen that you combine with oxygen to create water. It's another type of water. Mm -hmm. it's the universal waters. But let me take you back before the beginning began, before anything existed, before there was an earth, before there were stars, before there were superclusters. What existed? And our ancestors thought about that. They said, well, what existed? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we don't know, but we're going to call it Nun. And in the waters of Nun, it the, rested the creator. Mm -hmm. The creator was energy. Energy cannot know itself because it is energy. Mm -hmm. So what energy said, the very nature of the of the spiritual system said, well, I want to know me. But energy can't know energy. Mm -hmm. However, if I manifest myself in the material world, within the material world, which was in the nun, then I will grow to be able to know myself. Mm -hmm. And I will know me. I will be able to look back on me and know me. This is why you have astronomy. <laughs> know me. Mm -hmm. Know me is to know me, the spiritual essence of things. Mm -hmm. By the way, I taught this to fifth and sixth graders. I'm, I'm, I'm a retired teacher from New York City Board of Education. And I uh, taught our children these concepts, but didn't teach it to them the way I'm talking to you. Right. I taught them another way on their level mm -hmm. as nine, 10, 11 year olds, they would be able to, I gave them examples in their own world as to how they could understand this concept of know me, to know me. Right. And the, the creator desired, and when you go to the beginning, 
what I'm saying is that before the beginning began, the creator had um, a thought. Everything starts with a thought. Mm -hmm. And that's why Tehuti is so important in the story. The thought then creates desire in the heart. Desire in the heart creates a word and the word makes flesh. Mm -hmm. See, this is biblical, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's science. It ain't, it, it's not the Bible that they are talking about. Right. It's science. And that's why it's so beautiful. And that's why I wish African people, no matter what you are, I don't have a religion for you. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to stop you from being a, a Christian, a Muslim, a Hebrew Israelite, a Rosicrucian. I don't have a religion for you. What I want you to do is I want you to Africanize. Mm. Take the spiritual and understand where the religion came from because these Indo-Europeans didn't get it. They never understood. They, um, great scholar, Dr. Wade Nobles out of California said that Western civilization as we experience it is vomit. Okay, it's upchuck. And he said, because when, when the Indo-European or the Greeks and Romans sat at the feet of Africans, what the Kush Kemetic people were teaching them was too rich for them. The meal was too rich. Mm. And you know, when you eat a rich meal, you don't have the enzymes to break it down so you'll vomit it back up. Mm. And so what they did was they intellectually regurgitated it. And it became Western civilization. <laughs> but don't throw the vomit away. You, you don't want to eat it. You don't want to smell it. You don't want to even look at it. Examine it. Because in the vomit is the original meal that was cooked. Mm. And we as African people, we have the intellectual enzymes, the spiritual enzymes to be able to know what was in the meal. And therefore, when you know what's in the meal, just cook it again because mm. you can eat it because you have the intellectual spiritual enzymes to break it down. They don't. That's why they do what they do because mm. they don't get it. And I'm sorry. And I'm not speaking absolute. I don't speak in absolutes. I'm not going to say everybody because that's scientifically untrue. There are exceptions to all. But as a group, Indo-Europeans don't get it. Yeah. They just don't get it. They, they cannot break down the amino acids in order to bring it back together again to create the protein that the human body needs. Mm -hmm. Their minds don't operate like that, but ours do. And so as we're looking at what we're experiencing, the creator realized that if I can manifest myself, the energy of the creator, and take it through an evolutionary track by creating superclusters. Superclusters explode, became clusters. Clusters exploded, became galaxies. Galaxies exploded, became stars. Stars exploded, became planets. And on our planet, the third planet from the sun, it was not too hot and it was not too cold. It was within Maatian balance of the heat and the cold that allowed the earth to bring forward the bacteria in the water that became the fish, that became the amphibians, that became the reptiles, that became the mammals, that became the humans. Mm -hmm. And once the, the hands were the right size, the brain was the right size, the heart was the right size, the liver did what it was supposed to do, the kidney mm -hmm. did what it was supposed to do, the evolutionary track ended. But now that evolution was over, involution was to start. Mm, gotcha. in, search for the creator within find the creator and then make the word come flesh so we're not looking for a way of living so when we get up to heaven mm -hmm. we live a life that creates a heaven on earth mm. and that's spirituality yeah you can have a heaven after you transcend but how are you going to create a heaven in the heavens if you don't know what heaven is on earth? Right, right. 
And that's why spirituality came before religion is. Mm -hmm. It's a way of life. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a mer, M-E-R, mer. It's that ultimate concept of love, mm -hmm. cosmic love. Do you know an example of that cosmic love? You remember uh, the, the movie Birth of a Nation? Mm-hmm. You, you remember the scene where the European took a, a, a black woman from the, from the plantation homes and brought him up to the big house to bring pleasure to another European man? Mm -hmm. You remember the scene where her husband or her boyfriend or who, whoever he felt she was to him was underneath the window mm -hmm. and watched and knew what was going on in that room? Mm -hmm. And you remember when she came back down and they looked at each other and they embraced? Like, no matter what that man did to me, it's nothing for what I feel for you. Right. That black man told that black woman, no matter what he did, it will not impact how I feel towards you. Yeah. That is mer. Mm. That transcends all feelings. Right. All emotions. Do you, can you imagine, family, how powerful we are to be the to to be the ascendants? I don't call us descendants. We don't descend. We ascend. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine, my sister Maat? The we are the ascendants of that mare. Right. We are the ascendants of that relationship that was more powerful anything else and that is the one thing this society is most afraid of mm. never love each other that way again because mm. we don't have to necessarily go through what we're going through when yeah. we're on the plantation but think of that love that we had for each other that nothing will get between you and i that love is greater than anything that is so powerful. When I saw that scene, that was such a powerful scene to me because I've told stories before. I understand what happened to us on the plantations. I understand how we have to forego certain things as men. Mm -hmm. And then women had to go through things as women. Mm -hmm. Yet still on the plantation, we had that mer, that cosmic love. Mm. The, the love that can't be touched by dirty hands. Mm. That was powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, and family, I, I do, we, we're going to, you know, wrap up probably in about, you know, 30 minutes. And if you have any questions, go ahead, put in the chat. And I would, you know, I, I've been putting, we've been putting uh, Baba Kaba's information in the chat. Um, also send, you know, his cash up is in the chat. He's, he's here spreading knowledge. So I would love for y'all to, you know, give him, show him some love in his cash out. So I want to, um, talk about even the, you know, there's an, in our, uh, spaces now and in, in our community, we talk a lot about like healing that inner child. And so we talk about it from, you know, more from a traumatic, you know, from trauma. So a lot of us, we do have trouble developing those relationships as adults because in essence, we are still those broken children. So it has me think about uh, us as, you know, spiritual children, how, you know, babies and ch children, a lot of times they are very much connected um, to the spiritual realm. And as they mature, or I wouldn't even say mature, as we get older, you know, um, we we lose that connection. So I know you spoke about the characteristics of the human soul, um, per Dr. Uh, Wade Nobles. And I mean, at even at, our, you know, my age, being in my 30s, um, we should be in that stage where we're in like that full creative process, even at, you know, at the age that we're in. And so a lot of us have not learned how to develop that, you know, we're still, most of us, I believe are still in that child, 
I don't even know if you could say child because I think we have just really lost our connection. So what do we do about healing that spiritual child, healing that spiritual um, part of ourselves so that we can start better connecting um, with that creative power or, you know, uh, like you said, that involutionary process? My sister Maad, I believe that if we understood fundamentally who we are as a people, basically, that we are the creator having a human experience. Mm -hmm. That's the first cosmic law. The second cosmic law, there's only two laws that I've developed. One of them is to know that you are the creator having a human experience. The second commandment is to know that you must treat the creator's creations as you treat yourself. Mm. And not just in terms of each other as humans, but how you te- treat the water and the air and the land and all of the creations that are on the land. Respect them, mm. honor them, and to understand exactly where you are and that you were born with a divine purpose. Every one of us is assigned a divine purpose. We're here for a reason. Every one of us. And I'm including the brother or the sister who has a cup in their hand, wait for the red light to come out and ask you for some money when you stop at the red light. I love our people unconditionally. Be you pimp, prostitute, gang banger, drug pusher. I mean, I like what you do, but I love you as the creator's creation. And I see you as a creator. And what we have to understand and move forward. Okay, I'll give you another example. I'm, I'm a teacher, Sister Ma'at, so I got a lot of stories. You know, when you teach kindergarten and first graders, you better have a lot of stories. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when, when I live on the top floor in my building, and normally when I'm going downstairs, I'm always the first on the elevator. Mm-hmm. Okay. And someone comes on the elevator and I say, hello. And they say, oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, I don't say nothing. I come back on. Maybe a couple of days later, I get on the elevator again. Here, here they come again. I say hello. I say, hello. Okay. Days later, maybe weeks later, get on the elevator. I see them again. I may see them in the street. I say hello, and then they say hello. Later on, I say hello. They say hello. I say how are you? Fine, how are you? Okay. And then the next time when they come on, they tell me hello first. The point I'm making, of of course, I dragged it out to make it a dramatic story, but the point that I'm making, but I have done this before frequently. Mm -hmm. Some of us have to be strong enough to forgive us for the pain that we feel Mm. and what we've been through as a people. Some people say, oh, so you don't want to speak to me? Okay, I ain't going to speak to you no more. Right, right. But no, Some of us have to be able to identify the pain that we go through. And by a blissful experience, I have been blissed, my sister, my aunt. Mm -hmm. Not with a lot of money, not with a lot of other stuff, but I've I've been blissed with an understanding of who we are as a people. Mm. And because I've been with children throughout my career, I've taught every grade, I've taught every subject, I've taught college, I've taught high school. I know the pain that we feel on many different levels, particularly Mm -hmm. our children. So when you talk about that inner child, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And the more you hurt people, the more you hurt. Yeah. So my approach, without putting myself in danger way now, because I'm saying don't put yourself in harm's way now. Right. Because there's some folk that will abuse you. So I'm not saying to be a fool. But what I am saying is to leave enough room to understand that as the more horrible a person acts, the more hurt they've had in their life. Yeah. And so to offset you being another person that hurts them, they block you off Mm -hmm. by saying, I ain't going to talk to you. But what I say is, oh, yeah, you want to talk to me because I'm going to weigh you down. (laughs) <laughs> I'll weigh you down with love. You see, that's what Martin Luther King was talking about. Even though I think, with due respect, there are some people that you can't do that with. Yeah. But for the most part, many people you can do that with. Mm-hmm. Many people are 
looking for love, but they've been hurt for so long that they don't want to be hurt again. Right. And that's who we have been as a people. Our, our entire purpose on this, this part of the world for the past 400 years is to be recipients of harm and pain of bullies who themselves are insecure and have an inferiority complex. Yeah. So I, I am going to extend to my people the same type of understanding that I extend to people that don't deserve it. Mm. So if I could give you that kind of understanding, I know I can give some love to my own people. Yeah. And what motivates that love is mayor. Mm -hmm. It's an mm -hmm. unconditional love. I may not like what you're doing, but I do love you. Mm -hmm. I don't like you, but I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so um it's something that you just said and you said um worship uh, I'm sorry. I want to because I want to talk about the idea of what some people perceive as worshiping um and you said to um honor, right? Like honor the creator's creation whether that is nature whether that's other people. And so I know I have been told before like why you know from people who are religious why are you worshiping the creator's creation so it kind of reminded me of that when you just said what you said because you know my point of view and that you know the way that I've explained it is why wouldn't I not honor the sun that is gives me you know because of the sun I, I if there's no sun there's no us right you know why wouldn't I honor you know the plants and the trees and you know just nature because it is a reciprocal exchange so could you talk speak to that as far as what is actual worship do we have a us um we have a, a tainted view of actually what worship truly is well, my thing is, and because I'm very careful with words, words are very important. Words are very important. Mm -hmm. You think ma'at, you speak ma'at, you do ma'at. When you think, those are silent words. When you speak, those are verbal words. Mm -hmm. And when you do ma'at, you act, those are action words. But right. everything is a word. It's an expression. So words are very important to me. The way in which words are defined, I then try to rearrange words in order to be more exact in what I mean. Mm -hmm. So worship, I can't handle worship. Because worship is like, for, for instance, I tell people all the time, uh, I'm not humble. Humble is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. If you look up the definition of humble, humble means that you put yourself in a lesser position. You put somebody else up in a higher position. Mm -hmm. That's worship. Yeah. That's not a good thing. Okay. I don't have humility because to, to, to have humility means you are humble. Mm -hmm. I'm not humble. I own my greatness. Mm. I'm the creator. The creator is great. Mm-hmm. So why put myself in a lesser position? You see, this is what Indo-European religions do because they live through a slave mentality. Right. That's why they can quote the Bible <laughs> when they talk to slaves. Mm -hmm. Obey your master, okay? Like you obey God, okay? No, no. God, you are the creator having a human experience. How could you then take yourself out of yourself and put someone else up there. See, that's the slave mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. So that own your greatness. But the question becomes in owning my greatness and respecting the work I've done in education mm -hmm. and being able to do what I do to honor my accomplishments does not mean I dishonor someone else's accomplishments. It does not mean I put myself in a higher position than somebody else. In fact, I don't compete with other people. I only compete with myself. The mm -hmm. person that I am today, 
I pray is a better person that lived yesterday. Yes. And when I go to bed tonight, I'm going to pray that tomorrow I'm going to be a better person than I was today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But between other human beings, it's cooperation. Mm. I compete with myself, but I cooperate with other people. Yes. And if you rise, I rise. So if in my own way, what we're doing here today and what you are doing for our community by having this program and what Brother Tahuti is doing in terms of supporting you and being able to do what he does, mm -hmm. if we can make those who come on a better person, mm -hmm. then as they rise, we rise with them. Mm -hmm. That's an African way of thinking. When you rise, I rise. So it's in my best interest to do the most I can if I can help you. Mm -hmm. If there's something I can do to support you, I want to do it because your success is my success. Mm -hmm. And winners never lose. Mm -hmm. Winners either, either win or they learn mm -hmm. how to win next time. The only time you lose is when you don't try. Mm -hmm. You can try and maybe not get what you want. You didn't fail. What did you learn? So that the next time you try, you be successful. Mm -hmm. But at least you tried. And for that, you won to me. And this is an African way of thinking. Mm -hmm. In Africa, when I've studied the... the um, some, when, and, and again, Africa is a continent. It's a huge place with diverse thinkers and many different languages. So I'm not trying to pin everything down, but there is, as Dr. Diop says, a cultural unity in Black Africa. Right. When they taught you, see, see, here's the difference. When I taught my children, I didn't focus on what they knew. For instance, you take a test, you get eight answers right, you get two answers incorrect. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't necessarily focus on the eight that you got right, because you got them right. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do with the two that you did not get right, so that the next time you take a test, you get 10 right out of 10? Mm. So there was no punishment and reward for knowledge and wisdom. There was a forever organic growth of learning. Right. You didn't fail in Africa. You didn't fail. You may not have reached your goal, but at least you know now what you got to do to get to your goal. Mm -hmm. And they assumed that every human being, every child was capable of learning. And so therefore you would get it. But let's find out what you don't know and put aside what you do know and focus on what you don't know. So next time you get that right. Mm -hmm. There was no failure. Right. It was organic. And every teacher had faith. I, I taught special ed for years. Mm -hmm. I taught bilingual education. And the first thing I taught, I, and in college, I taught all my students first day of school. Everybody in this room is a genius. We just got to find out the area that you're a genius in. Mm-hmm. And my job is to assist you in that search, going back to turning uh, on the lights and seeing everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, bottom line is um, I can't turn your light switch on. Mm. Only you can do that. Yeah. I can make it possible to make it possible. Mm -hmm. I can inspire. I can encourage. I can bring it to the point where you know the light switch is in the room. Mm-hmm. But only you can turn your light switch on. Mm. I can't do that. And I know I can't. This is another thing. The difference between skills and strategy. We, we always get into these conversations like, um, uh, I'm going to teach you skills. You can't teach skills. Skills are something you're born with. <laughs> what you teach is strategies. Okay. Your skills. But you can't teach skills. Even young people say, yo, I got skills. Yeah, I say, yeah, you do. <laughs> skills. The question is, do you have the strategies to perfect your skills? Mm. And my job as an educator would have been to give them the multiple ways in which their genius could be brought forward. Mm. Give you an example. 
when I taught fifth grade, I had a student. He's from Mexico. Okay. And somewhere along the line, he had a cousin, teenager, came to live with them in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And one day we were talking about music and he told me that his cousin played the guitar. Like after dinner, the, the cousin would play the guitar for the family. And, and one day he said to, uh, to his young cousin, my student, uh, you, you like guitar? He said, yeah. He said, uh, uh, you, you want to learn? He said, yeah. And uh, I said, well, invite your cousin to come in to the class and he can play for us. So he invited his cousin in. His cousin played the guitar. And wow, he, he was really good. And then he gave it to his young cousin, my student, and he played. He was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my question. That young student that I had never played guitar before. Mm. He didn't start playing it until his cousin came up and he got intrigued by it. So my question to us as, as the adults looking at the children, what our children need is what I call OPINEX. That's an acronym. Mm -hmm. Opportunities for learning, environment for growth, and experiences in the individual and social settings. Mm. Sister Ma'at, suppose that cousin never came up to the Bronx to live with them. Would he have played the guitar? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Suppose the cousin came up, played the piano. Would he have learned how to play the piano? Mm. Suppose the cousin came up and he was a soccer player. Would he have learned how to play soccer? The point I'm making is that that cousin coming up with that skill brought out a skill in a student that he may never have known. Yeah. So we got to give our children opportunities. Mm-hmm. Okay, when I was a gym teacher, my, my background when I was in college was um, gymnastics. I, I, I was the rings. I, I was on the rings and I was on, on the horse. Okay. My two events. <laughs> Brothers, when I was growing up, you know, in my neighborhood, I was on the playground one day. I was young and, the, you know, we were playing basketball and I thought I was going to be funny. And so I threw the ball in their hoop. To give them two points. Mm -hmm. And the brothers I was playing with were angry at me. And even the brothers that got the two points, they were angry with me. They <laughs> made a deal with me. And the deal was if I never stepped on the basketball court again, they promised me that I would live. <laughs> <laughs> so the brothers chased me off basketball. So I had to learn other sports. Ah, okay. And so gymnastics was a sport that I took up. Mm -hmm. And the point that I'm making is that my first teaching job in the New York City Board of Ed was as a gym teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was able to order gymnastics um, equipment, mm -hmm. horse, um, the parallel bars, the rings, and I taught them gymnastics. Mm. But in so many schools, the first thing that the gym teacher does is throw a basketball out. Yep. Not that there's anything wrong with basketball. It has its place. I understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But our children deserve opportunities. Yeah. I taught children how to swim. We have to we have to offer our children opportunities, but not just that family. We have to be able to have opportunities because this story that I told about the guitar, somebody online might have said, you know, I always wish I could have played guitar. Now that I heard that brother tell that story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this brother might ask somebody for Kwanzaa, get me a guitar. Mm -hmm. And that person may and that person may learn to play the guitar so well. They say, man, I never knew I had it in you. But you did have it in you because I told you in the beginning of this conversation, you were born with everything you need. Mm -hmm. You're a guitar player. You're a piano player. You're a soccer player. You, you, you can do gymnastics. You can do basketball. You can sing. You can do whatever you put your mind to. The question is, what's on your mind? Mm -hmm. Because they have stunted you with who you are. They have yeah. purposefully underdeveloped us as a people. Mm -hmm. made us think that we need all this other stuff outside of us for us to be successful. No, I'm telling you, you're successful from the moment you were born. Mm -hmm. You got to own your greatness. Yeah. It doesn't make you better or greater than someone else. But it does give you an opportunity to understand how great you are. And if you're great and I'm great, then we got two great going on. And now we're going to do great things. Mm-hmm.
Mm -hmm. I do have um, a question here for you. I, I, Brother Ayapo said, along with spirituality before religions, what would be more suggested reading? Let me recommend you go to my website, www.kabakamane.com. www.kabakamene. Download my free e course and study guide. My study guide has a list of all the different subjects that I teach African, the African origins and uh, 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 the African origins of humanity, Africans in America, Africans in Europe, the Moors, Africans in America. And it has a list of all the books. It's 44 pages. It's free. It's the most important document I've ever created. Dr. John Henry Clark, who I consider to be my teacher, once told me, you may not get to your, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's dot com, not Gumroad, uh, but, but you will go to Gumroads, but, it, but it, 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 I don't think it's Gumroads, it's dot com. Oh, okay. And then it'll take you there. But thank you for that, though. Um, he said, you may not get to your destination, but if you leave the proper roadmap, those that come behind you will. Mm-hmm. And that study guide that's on that's on my website, www.kabakamane.com. It'll take you to Gumroads. And you put your email in. And then the first day of the e-course, it's a six-day e-course. The first day of the e-course will come down. And then the study guide will come down. And in that, I have a list of all the books. Now, in my book, Spirituality Before Religions, in the back, I have a whole list of books. Of, of of things dealing with um, uh, religions. I mean, you know, like I don't talk about the other religions, but I certainly will give you the book Christianity Before Christ by John G. Jackson. And if you want to know who Moses really was, I'll give you the book uh, Moses and Akhenaten, mm -hmm. Ahmed Osman to read. I mean, if you want to know the evolution of Islam, if you want to know the evolution of Christianity, Mm -hmm. If you want to know who exactly the Haibris were, who became the Hebrews, who be, see, with all this discussion, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, about faith systems and religions, mm -hmm. I don't attack religions. Mm -hmm. Religions don't make people do what they do. They're white supremacists. It's not the religion that makes them do what they do. It's the fact that they're white supremacists and that they have an inferiority complex. And then they hide behind their religion when you go after them. Yeah. And what we have to do is understand how to negotiate the conversation. And to understand that all religions came out of Africa. Mm -hmm. Period. And these religions that came through spirituality existed for millions of years before any Indo-European got their hands on it. That is why I wrote Spirituality Before Religions because I wanted to write this book, Shabaka Stone. This is the Old Testament and the New Testament together. Mm. Shabaka Stone. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament is the story of Asar. The New Testament is the story of Heru. Mm. And it's carved on Shabaka stone. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful story. And if you lived your life according to what Shabaka stone tells you, we would have a wonderful earth. In fact, if people who claim to be these religions practiced what they what their scripture told them, minus some of the contradictions, they it would be a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. So it's obvious that somebody not following, somebody ain't practicing what they preach. And then from Shabaka Stone, you know, I got to work with the children. So I wrote Shabaka Stone for children. Mm -hmm. Because I said to myself, if I had known this story when I was a child. Mm, yeah. Wow. If I had just known these different concepts of the greatness of the human being, you know, it's, you know, that's my disappointment. I'm not angry. I'm not upset. I'm disappointed. Mm 
Mm-hmm. My disappointment comes in how beautiful life really could be. You know, we weren't put on this earth for this. The creator did not create us for us to have to worry about paying the rent. That's why he <laughs> gave us the earth, because she knew we needed a place to live. And she gave us the plants and all the other things that we could eat. She gave that to us free. Who are we to charge people? Mm-hmm. We done polluted the water, and now we're charging people for good water. We polluted the air, and now we're giving and pay, making people pay for good air. Mm-hmm. Okay? The earth was free. Then it was polluted, and now they sell you soil. Yeah. I'm sorry, family. Something's wrong with that story to me. Mm-hmm. This is not supposed to be like this. Our life is not supposed to be like this. When you go back into the early days of Africa, there was no crime. Theofalio Benga, the great scholar that worked with Dr. Sheikh Abdi, I've said for 35 centuries, there was no crime in Africa. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of crime that we know today. Right. There's always people that are going to do something. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make it seem like it's all rosy. We had our challenges. But they were the exception, not the rule. Mm Mm-hmm. And we're living in a world that has been contaminated by a contaminated people that lived in the ice. Yeah. And because of that, they brought the ice down to the sun. But believe me, family, that ice is thawing out now. It's called global warming. We got to get ourselves together. Mm hmm. So how do we achieve that heaven on earth? Because I know you, you you spoke about that heaven on earth. So as a as a community, as a people, how do we go about achieving that? Kwanzaa. Mm. Kwanzaa. I've had a chance to speak to Maulana Karenga. Mm-hmm. The seven principles of Kwanzaa existed for a long time. But the thing is how how it was put into place. And whenever I speak on Kwanzaa, I I always talk about understanding the importance. The first day is unity, umoja. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't have unity, forget the other six days. Mm -hmm. Forget them. And then out of having unity, but unity with yourself first. Mm-hmm. See, I know for us to get along with each other, that, that that's very important. Yeah. But before I can get along with you, I got to get along with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got to love myself. Yeah. When I first met Dr. Clark, I was 12 and a half in Harlem. He was speaking and they brought us up to, to hear him speak. And he gave us a homework assignment. The young people. Well, everybody, but he was talking to the... There was about five or six of us that were young. I was 12 and a half. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want you to go home and I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to tell the person that you're looking at, I love you and mean it. Because if you can't do that, Mm -hmm. there's nothing anyone else can do for you. And, you know, with my children... You know, we used to get a kick out of it because they would always come around in in the bathroom when when I was getting ready to go to work and they were ready to go to school and and, and they'd be looking. And and I would throw myself a kiss and say, I love you. (laughs) But the point I was making was I was trying to demonstrate to my own children. You know, even though it was dramatic. Yeah, it was. But I was loving myself. Yeah. And they got to see a black man loving himself. Mm hmm children every day and sometimes I had to do it when I came home because they didn't see me yeah if if I was leaving early so I said no 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 daddy you got to go do that and so I and so I would go they say you got to go love yourself (laughs) 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 you got to love yourself you 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 have to love the texture of your hair Mm -hmm. the width of your nose Mm -hmm. the shape of your lips the pigment in your skin Mm -hmm. And even if you feel there are improvements that you can make with yourself, make those improvements through love. Mm 
Mm, yes. Don't say, I hate how I look. Mm -hmm. Love how you look, but know that there are things you need to do to improve yourself. Mm -hmm. And do it because you love yourself. Yeah. And because you deserve better. But that first day of Kwanzaa, unity is the first day. You must be united with yourself. Your body, your soul, your spirit, and your and 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 your mind have to be united. Mm -hmm. And then you can unite with entities outside of yourself. Right. And then you can determine for yourself who you are, which mm -hmm. is the second day, Kuji Chagulia. And so when you know yourself and united with yourself and you determine for yourself who you are, mm -hmm. then you can collectively work with other people and have the responsibility because responsibility is two words, not one. Mm -hmm. Responsibility is your response to your abilities. Right. What you're going to do with what the creator gave you. And then after that becomes the cooperative economic. Purpose, creativity, mm -hmm. and the faith. Yeah. Not the kind of faith that you believe. The kind of faith that you know. Mm -hmm. And out of those seven principles is a beginning of understanding something from a different perspective. But the first step in this journey is to love who you be. Because mm -hmm. ain't nobody going no place if you don't love yourself. You can't love another person if you don't love yourself. Right. You can't. You might have another kind of emotion, but it ain't love. Mm. That's the kind of love that we're talking about. Because mm -hmm. we throw that love around a little bit too much. We don't yeah. know what love is. You know, love is like when you get married, my sister Ma'at, I know you know, and my brother Tahuti know, and anybody married know. That what used to be I, me, and mine become we, us, and ours. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time I used to walk around when my shopping bags were saying the Mad Hatter, Shirt King. Okay. When mm -hmm. I got married and had children, they said kids are us, toys are us, you know, mm -hmm. babies are us. Okay. Because what's yours is now ours. And one of the things that was a breakthrough in the earliest of the human beings was the act of sharing. Mm. That's the same thing with us as humans, you know. What, what separates an immature child from to a mature child is that they're willing to share. Because mm. everything else is, that's mine. That's mine. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it's mine, but I'm willing to bring the happiness to you too. Mm -hmm. That was a breakthrough in the human family. Mm. And that's something that a lot of us have lost right now. Yeah. Okay. If we can get back to that now, again, I'm not telling you to make mistakes and share with the wrong people. Right. <laughs> there are some people that will take everything you got and not care. Mm -hmm. But if you share with the right people, you know, in life, some day, some days we're the sun, and some days we're the moon. The sun has light. But the moon shines the sun's light. Mm. We're not going to be suns every day. Yeah. But if when I'm the sun, I shine on your moon. Mm. Tomorrow, when you're the sun, you'll remember what I did. And you'll shine your light on me. And that's what brought the human family forward mm -hmm. for us to be where we are today yeah that is spirituality it is the energy of mer mer in this chair that's good um well i think we can end on that note i really appreciated this and you know I think I will we'll just end with just giving a word on those who are still on the path of recognizing their divine purpose. 
So if you could just end on that note with um, with that, before we end, everyone just make sure that you do um, his uh, Baba Kaba's socials are here and also make sure you get these books, Spirituality um, Before Religions, and then we have the Shabaka Stone, <laughs> and I will be ordering um, our kids the Shabaka Stone for kids as well. And may um, I say something, my sister? Mm -hmm. My first book was a libation mm. to a brilliant brother. This was my first book. This is my, you know, as an African, you always do libation mm -hmm. before you, you enter into any type of activity. And because I was going to write a series of books, before I would do that, I would pay libation, pay homage to William Leo Hansberry, who is the architect of the African Studies Program. Mm -hmm. if, if we're into African history and we want to study our history, this man was the one that started it back in 1922 at mm -hmm. Howard University. This is an intellectual libation to a brother that when you study his life and you understand what this brother did, he was the uncle to Lorraine Hansberry, the writer who wrote Raisin in the right. Sun. This is a brilliant, brilliant brother who sacrificed so much back in those days to make it happen for us. And so I paid homage to him before I started writing my books. That's another book. Um, and again, it's in my website. It's also in the link tree. The other thing I'd like to tell you is that um, tonight, right after I do this, I'm going to go on to um, Instagram. I'll do an Instagram live Oh, okay. from Panther Prince Productions. And I'm going to talk about a documentary that um, Heruna Set and I produced. It's, it's titled The Hands That Built the Pyramids mm -hmm. in the White House. Mm -hmm. We're trying to make a connection for us to understand the totality of our experience that they did not bring slaves from Africa. They, they brought, they, they captured, stole, kidnapped, and brought to America skilled geniuses mm -hmm. that built the White House, that built the Capitol building. And we spent time in Washington, D.C. this summer creating this documentary. It will be up tonight. It should be up right now. And you'll be able to go to the link tree and you'll be able to download that documentary also. The hands that built the pyramids built the White House. We mm -hmm. have to understand our history. Sister Ma'at, mm -hmm. we have to understand who we are as a people. Yes. We have to understand how great we are. I understand why they forbid us from reading. Mm-hmm. Because they knew that one day a sister Ma'at and a brother Tahuti and a brother Kaba was going to have a program that was going to discuss the greatness of who we are as a people. Mm -hmm. And, I'll, and I, I don't forget what Thomas Jefferson said. He said, I tremble that God is just. Mm. Because when his justice comes forward, we will pay a price. Yeah. They knew what they were doing to us when they did it. Mm -hmm. And they trembled to think what their, what their ascendants would go through. Because mm -hmm. we're going to get reparations. We're going to get it. The question is not if, the question is when. Yeah. And the longer it takes to get it, the higher the price you're going to pay. Mm -hmm. Or what our ancestors did for free, we built this country. Mm-hmm. And it's just a matter of time, my sister, before we're able to do what's necessary. Reparations is the future of our children to lay the foundations for them to have the type of civilization. And mm -hmm. as we end our conversation, I just want to ask us, where do you see our children in the year 21-22? Where do you see the children on December 15th? 21, 22. What do you want them to be? Where do you see them? And now let's start working towards that. Solar mm -hmm. power is the future wealth of the planet. Mm -hmm. You see, they just came out this other day where they have nuclear fused for the mm -hmm. first time. They're talking about it. That's very important. I have to come back and talk about that. I'm going to talk because I tell people all the time, solar power is the future wealth of the planet. And isn't it interesting where the sun shines the brightest, the people are the most melanated. Mm -hmm. 
Right. It's like to create a put wealth in our backyard and said, run with it. Do your mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Solar power. You can go and get a free Kindle. It's called Solar Power Demystified. Okay. You can go to Amazon and get it free. Read Solar Power. Mm -hmm. It's the future energy system. Nuclear fusion is the power. That's why you see today President Biden hosted those 50 nations or, or hosted the African Union because he's trying to get them to understand because everybody know, China know, Russia know, U.S. know, the future mm -hmm. of Africa. Don't give up Africa. Yeah. Mm. Don't just family. Just keep on keeping on. It ain't over till we win. Yes. And I, I, I want to tell you how proud I am of what you're doing and to your, and to your mate, to your husband, uh, Tehuti and to your family. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to the community. I truly appreciate what you're doing. And I just look forward to the future. I appreciate that. Um, do I do I for what you um, have been doing, the impact that you have had on so many people, especially um, us as a family. But I do appreciate you. Thank you for coming and gracing your presence, um, your, my stage with your presence. And I will uh, head over and check out um, what you're doing on Instagram. But I wanna also thank everyone who came in and you know uh, participated in the conversation in the chat i appreciate all of you as well thank you for subscribing liking sharing share this important information and remember to um also make sure that you um support our um master teacher and elder here as well so with that being said we are going to end today's live stream peace family Hotep, and I will see you next time.